track builders nowadays seem to be trying to come up with obstacles to test the riders more and more all the time. Now today we're at a supercross track and we're going to be discussing rhythm sections and more importantly three different ways that you can tackle this part of a supercross track. Now once you get yourself to a reasonable level on a supercross track, you'll find pretty much everyone's doing the triple the same, doing the corners the same, even doing the massive set of whoops the same. It's actually in the rhythm section where you start to get a few variations and there's a lot of time to be made up on this part of the track. So what we're going to be discussing today is the three different ways that you can do it, some a little bit faster than others, but all of them extremely technical. Now, a rhythm section can mean almost anything on a supercross track, from six single jumps to a double, triple, whatever. There's so many different variations. But for us today, what we're going to be working on is a triple step up. So we start with a small jump, then we move to a bigger jump, and then finish off with another third small jump. A lot of different ways you can tackle this. The three ways we're going to be dealing with it, first and the most obvious, is to roll the first one and double out over the big one. The second way, reasonably tricky, is what's called a wheel tap, where we jump off the first jump, back wheel touches the second one and pops us over and down the third. Reasonably tricky, that's for sure. And the third and the fastest is to leap from the first small one all the way over, just missing the second one and landing down the third one. Fastest, but also the biggest risk. Yes, it is aimed at your slightly more advanced riders, but really you only need to have your basic jumping under your belt before you can start giving this a little bit of a go. Now we are lucky enough to have factory CDR Rockstar Yamaha rider Shane Boyd here today doing our demonstrations and taking us through one at a time what it's supposed to look like. Now, once again, you don't need to be as good as Shane Boyd to do this, but you do really need to have your basic jumping under your belt, just as a safety precaution. Now, obviously, if we had have done this from the start, we would have first of all walked it through, and then second of all, rolled through all three jumps on the bike, just to make sure everything's okay, pick the nice lines on the jump, make sure there's no rocks or ruts, all the safety factors that need to be brought into consideration. The first stage in the three-step process is basically what's called single double. Now what that means is we're going to be rolling over the first one and then doubling out. It's the slowest of all three and it's the safest, but the main thing here, the main thing you need to make sure you don't do is approach the first jump too fast. You'll land at the base of the second one and this can cause the suspension to bottom out and spit you over the handlebars. Now the next thing we need to do, you need to make sure that you give it a little bit of gas up and over the second jump. Remember we're trying to single and then double out, we need to get enough lift, enough flight off that second jump so that we land down the back side of the third jump. If you don't give it any gas on the top of the second jump, it'll dip the front end down straight into the third jump and you'll step over the handlebars. Now once you can consistently do this four or five times in a row with your timing spot on and landing beautiful down the back side of that third jump, you know it's time to step, step up to the next level, which is definitely a little bit trickier. Now the second part of this process is what we call a wheel tap. Now it's something that we do in the whoop section occasionally, we do it on rhythm sections, and it's what we're going to be doing here today. Now what it involves is instead of rolling over the first one and jumping two out, we actually try to jump off the first one and we only allow our back wheel to hit the top of the second jump. Making sure as our back wheel hits the second jump, we give it a bit of a gas and a slip of the clutch and it pops us up and over and down the back side of the third one. Now the tricky thing here is that our front wheel doesn't hit the second jump. If you don't know what you're doing and you don't loft your front wheel high enough, it drops the front wheel down really, really quick and once again, seems to be the way here, you can step over the bars very easily. Now the benefit of doing it this way is it's a lot faster than the original way, step number one, of rolling and then doubling out. You save a lot of time, but it really is an in-between step to jumping all the way over the top if possible. Now there will be obstacles on a track where occasionally you won't be able to get enough lift off that first one all the way up and over the top of the second one. And this is a perfect example of where it's good to wheel tap, let that back wheel hit the second one and bounce you up and over and down the third jump. Okay, so now we're ready for stage three and without a doubt the most fun of the three stages that we have here. 
When you get it right, stage three is the easiest. You don't even touch the second jump, which is the highest one. You leap over the top of it. Now, where the problem comes from is that even when you get it right, you only miss the second jump by a few centimetres. So this could be a little bit daunting for some riders. You want to make sure that you don't clip that second jump, especially when you're not meaning to. Now, one of the mistakes that's very easy to make when you're trying to do this for the first time is trying not to loft your front wheel. If you loft your front wheel, it'll slam the back wheel into the top of the second one and you'll be soaring over the handlebars before you know what happens. Now, there is some good news here. The good thing about doing this tricky little stage three is you can jump off to the side of the track. Now, what you do is you get your build-up speed, you run up, you take off, everything sorted that you need to get sorted and jump off to the side of the track. It's really handy if you've got a mechanic, a mate, your girlfriend, whatever it may be, to be standing on the side of the track and get down and have a nice little look and make sure that your wheels are getting enough clearance to get over the top of that second jump. Now remember, we're only talking about centimetres, so it is quite handy. You might think to yourself, no problem, I'm getting enough height here, but it might not be the case. So it's really handy to have someone there keeping an eye on it for you. Now the obvious difference between stage two wheel tapping and stage three leaping over the whole lot is your entry speed. The entry speed that you need to get all the way over the second one without even wheel tapping is a lot higher. So you need to try to bring that into consideration. Now when you've got your friend off to the side making sure you've got enough clearance to get over the second one, you also need to consider are you jumping far enough to get all the way down the third jump. It's one thing to get over the second one, that's great. But if you land nose first into the third jump, it's not going to feel too good either. So you really do need to make sure that your approach speed is fast enough in a case like this. Now the main benefits here is pretty much everything. It's smoother, it's faster and it's less energy. If you can somehow avoid having to touch that second obstacle, then you've pretty much beaten the track builder's design here and, uh, and avoiding what he's wanting you to do. Now always remember, practice makes perfect. You've got to keep doing this to try to get your skills under your belt. And also, don't be scared to have a bit of a safety first attitude. There's no points out there for being able to jump a jump like this the very first time you try it. Uh, there's no, no extra points for guts. If you can safely jump it off to the side of the track, and you know you're going to get enough clearance and enough distance, it's a much better way of doing it and avoiding a trip to hospital. Always remember, guys, the main thing, you've got to have fun. No matter what you do on two wheels, always have fun. We'll catch you next time.